video fashion models. Top Models of the World is the ultimate model competition. We're counting down 100 extraordinary catwalkers from every corner of the planet. Video fashion crews travel the globe, meeting top models who showcase the latest and greatest style, from the most beautiful to the hottest sensations, to gorgeous girls who are bigger than life. We're ranking leading ladies of the runway. Holland is rife with stunning strutters, and this issue of Video Fashion Models boasts a bevy of beauties from the land of wooden shoes. Want to join the top model conversation? Log on to Facebook and Twitter and make your voice heard on the countdown. Get to know Rihanna, Ikaline, Daphne, Laura, Karen, Doutson, Bet, and Saskia. Watch and find out which of these eight Dutch delights is number one on our list. And to kick off the countdown, at number eight, it's doll-faced Bet Frank. Tulips aren't the only beautiful things exported out of Holland. Since her 2005 runway debut in Milan, Bet Frank has been making a place for herself in the fashion industry. How she was discovered is every girl's dream. I'm from Holland and I was shopping in, uh, in Amsterdam with my mother and someone from Holland uh, scouts me on the streets. That was when I was 14 and um, yeah, I, I thought it was a little strange but let's give it a try. It's hard to believe with a now flourishing modeling career that Bet would have been skeptical at first. Yeah, then someone comes to you and say, oh, do you want to be a model? That's strange. <laughs> Don't you think so? Jill Sander, that was the first show I did. It was really exciting because it was my first show and I had to open it, so. I was really nervous. Not nervous anymore, but real, you feel something, but I, don't, I can't explain it. Busy, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, I like it. I, like, I really like it, yeah. The people and the things you do and just all, all of it. I'm still in school, so most of the time I'm in school in Holland. So. I'm just with friends and stuff. In Holland there are a few magazines and when a girl, uh, a friend of mine was just reading it and she said, oh my god, it's you! But I didn't tell her that I was in, so <laughs> it's really funny. At number seven, get to know style star Ikaline. The striking looks of Ikaline Stanga have gained her the attention of the fashion industry. But it's the Dutch beauty's way with her wardrobe off the runway that has intensified the spotlight shining in her direction. It's cool to just be kind of be free in what, what you feel like wearing and just be creative and it doesn't matter if it, you know if it has to be matching or just you know just do what you feel like. It's like a, a leotard and I, I found it in um, New York somewhere in a vintage shop. It's like a, from the 70s or something. It's a, like a figure skating outfit. <laughs> I went to some castings and my agency got some reactions. Like I was wearing the silver sequence leotard, you know, and stuff like that with the glasses and whatever. And then um, my book of cast me and she's like, yeah, so we have to talk about your wardrobe, you know. <laughs> this is just like a little vintage top that I found in Holland in a vintage store. And my boyfriend gave me these tights from a... Uh, they're from American Apparel. I'm obsessed with vintage shopping. I'm just like, I go crazy there. But piles and piles of vintage clothes. Even while trying to finance her photography studies, Ikaline's unique style didn't go unnoticed. I was walking around in the, 
in the mall and I was still kind of like a punk rocker, you know, I had like red dreadlocks in my hair and like a little ring in my nose and big pants and all this crazy stuff and this guy came on to me and he's kind of staring at me like, yeah, do you want to be a model? And then like the first time I was like, oh no, it's not for me, you know. <laughs> then I got scouted again and my mom was like, oh, you can, you can make some money, you know, next to school and stuff like that. experience I love the traveling and you meet so many different people and there's I've met some really amazing girls in this business as well the shows are really tough because it's so much running around and like every night like especially in Paris it's like one or two hours sleep every night I remember last last season on Mark Jacobs, which was quite known as well, where I had to open the show and my shoe came off and stuff like that. Yeah, that was quite disastrous, but it you know it turned out to be fine. Of course, I'm just trying to make my money as well, and then because I want to do ph photography in the future, which is quite difficult to, to make your money. I don't want to just be categorized as one kind of person. I like to be like different every day, you know, I'm not, you know, so many different sides of yourself and I just like to kind of show that as well. Breakout star Daphne ranks at number six on our countdown. Hi, my name is Stephanie uh, Hunefels. I started like two years ago and I was scouted in uh, Amsterdam. I was shopping with my mom, but I was scouted like two times before. One time in Paris, but then I was only 30 years old. And one time on the internet and then again in Amsterdam. So I thought maybe I could try it out. <laughs> But first of all, I thought we're gonna do it like really slowly so I can finish my school, but it was going really quick and now I'm here, so that's exciting. Daphne's distinct features were exaggerated backstage at the Altazara show, where the teenager was excited to be working again for the New York designer. Yes, uh, last season I opened it. Yeah, it's really strong woman and I really love it. The hair is, you can see it, it's really beautiful and the eyebrows are really strong and I love it. I love the clothes, the collection is really beautiful and I love to work for Altara because the people are so kind and really nice, so it's, it's an honor. This Dutch beauty is still a small town girl and she brings a special someone from back home with her on the road. I'm from Holland and I live close to Amsterdam like 20 minutes ago in a small village and yeah I still live there. My mom is always traveling with me because I'm only 16 years old so she thinks I'm kind of young. <laughs> yeah it's good. I'm still in high school. I made my exams like last year but I didn't pass them so I had to do it again but it's fine. After just a few seasons in the industry, Daphne has already graced the pages and covers of Elite magazines. Her extraordinary look has quickly become a favorite of top designers. I had a great season. I did some covers and I did the Louis Vuitton campaign and like She and She campaign. It was two seasons ago, but that was really great and the the cover of the French Vogue was, of course, a big honor, and yeah, I've done really great things. Every season is so different, and every time it's, you know, it's excited because you see all the collections every season, and you know, the designers are doing a great job. It's hard work for them, and I love to be backstage with all the girls, and it's really nice. At number five on our list, it's exotic face, Rihanna. In Dutch, you say it like Rihanna, but for a lot of people, it's really hard to pronounce. <laughs> I discovered me on the street, like, you know, it's a story. 
I was shopping with my mom. Somebody came to me and asked me if I wanted to be a model. You know, that's how things got started. When I was discovered, I was 14, so I was so young. So I really like didn't know what to do. But then I was like, you know, why shouldn't I try it? So I just worked in the weekends a little bit. I never thought of being a model, so for me, like, it was like a whole new world. You need to have the right looks to be a model, and I think as a 14-year-old girl, you're not really like, oh my god, I'm so pretty, I'm going to be a model. And I was very realistic, I was like, listen, I just want to, you know, I just want to do my, finish my school, and you know, after that, we'll see. I was never really into like being a princess anyway, or being a model, no, it's just not me. I finished high school uh -huh. in July, uh -huh. and I'm starting college in two weeks. I'm gonna do like a school of tourism, which is like a lot of languages, if I may. I speak, of course, Dutch, German, English, and a little French. And I really want to do something besides this job because it's a little, it's driving me a little crazy sometimes. Why? I don't know, it's just because you, like, you never really use your brains. It's always about the way you look. If people look at you more as an object than as a person. I just need to, like, have something else, you know, where I can focus on. And I know, like, this is not going to be forever, and, you know. You never know what's gonna happen in your life. So I, I mean, if you would t tell me, like, told me like four years ago that would be like a model right now, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Landing at number four on the countdown, it's boyish beauty Saskia. Hi, this is Saskia. Saskia could easily pass for a teenager, but the androgynous Dutch beauty is quickly becoming one of the industry's more mature success stories. I'm actually 29, yes. Maybe I should say I'm 19. I'm 19. I started in Holland and uh, I did a lot of commercial work in Holland. I stopped modeling for a couple of years and now since one year I'm working again. I went to art school, I studied art and I'm a visual artist. I think the whole reason why I, I went to study art was because I was a model. Yeah, I've always enjoyed it. I did uh, Reed Crackle, Matthew Williamson and Paul Smith today. I really find the clothes very beautiful. I had a few pieces at home uh, a couple of years ago, but it's a little bit expensive for me, but... <laughs> Her clients' collections may have been too pricey a few seasons ago, but now that Saskia is an in-demand model, the working artist has a more flexible budget. I'm combining my own work with modeling, which is for me a very nice combination. I'm able to, yeah, to work on my own projects and meanwhile do this job as well. So I like very much the process of making images with a team of people. I think my friends and my family, they, they support me and, uh, in whatever choice I make and they also support the modeling part of my life, which is very nice to have uh, people who yeah, support you. <laughs> this is really the first time I do shows and the first time I really experience this kind of traveling. I mean, I have to say that I miss home and my boyfriend and my cat, <laughs> but it's also exciting. The lean, long-limbed model knows her body is her business and she makes sure to keep it in top form. I do yoga. I started when I was 16 doing that. I mean, it's body and mind. No, no, no. I hate the gym and uh, I mean, I eat healthy, but that's what I really like to do. I think eating uh, lots of fruit, fruit and vegetables <laughs> and just like good bread and to eat, really to eat is very important and it makes you kind of happy inside when you eat healthy. At number three on our countdown, it's the Angelic Doudson. Most fashion followers will recognize Doudson from the multitude of runway exits. 
and just as well because her name is a little less familiar. I'm from Holland, from the north. And there also it's not a common name. Really? Yeah, it's very rare. I think it's like three people I know with my name. It was more that I want to make some money. And my friends always told me, uh, maybe you can make some money, send pictures. I was like, no. You know, it's, I think it's a little bit arrogant. If you think of yourself, you're pretty. And so, but then the day came and I didn't make any money and had no job. And I was like, oh, let's try it. You never know. And then it was a holiday and then they asked me if I could go to New York. So, it went pretty fast. I had no imagination. I, I was just sent pictures and I thought I would be in the magazines or... I, I didn't know what, to, what, what I actually was doing. My par I didn't even tell my parents. I sent pictures and I said one day, well, we have to go to Amsterdam. And they were like, why? <laughs> yeah, I have to go to a model agency. And that's how it started. Yeah, it was, I was, I don't know. I had no imagination of how it was. I was not even interested in modeling at all. I was just looking for making some money. I think the traveling is nice, meeting nice people. But in the same time, you meet also very mean people and fake people, of course. But that's I think in every every job. And one day you like it, and the other day it's, you hate it. But I think with modeling, it's very close to each other. Like five minutes, you can you love what you're doing, and then the other five minutes, you can meet someone really mean or someone's calling from home. You get homesick. Now based in New York. Dalton has no shortage of things to do in the Big Apple, but still feels her heart belongs to her homeland. I like, but I, I like, I think I like Europe more. I'm more like, a, yeah, they're, they're more cooler. I don't know. In New York, it's more stress and everybody is working so hard. I feel more lonely in New York. Now a Victoria's Secret angel and a mother, this pouty beauty has the modeling world at her feet. Dalton enjoys every step of the runway. No complaints from this gorgeous girl. What I want to be, no, I have no idea. I want to do something, maybe some charities. I, st I still already do charities, but it's only giving money, but I would love to do some, uh, some work for, for uh, Worldwide Fund or UNICEF, these kind of things. But to school, I don't think I want to go anymore. Sometimes I miss it, but I don't want to go anymore. I finished it and uh, yeah, I think this is a nice life. Yeah, I like it. Landing at number two, it's Holland hottie Karen Mulder. I think being sexy is something a person is or just isn't. I don't think it's something you can be. I don't know. You have to have it inside of you already. Dutch-born Karen Mulder wasn't called Smolder Mulder for nothing. At the tender age of 17, Mulder captured the attention of the fashion industry with her naive sex appeal. Somebody that isn't sexy, you can put the most amazing outfit and, and everything, but still it's going to be, you know, you have to feel it, otherwise you cannot be sexy. You can put somebody in a, in a garbage bag and look sexy and some people, you know, and garbage bag looking garbage. <laughs> Look at this, this is so cute. I love this. So pretty. It's adorable. Season after season, the blonde bombshell strutted down the most celebrated runway, the Victoria's Secret Show. They give you something that you don't like or you don't feel comfortable and you don't have to wear it. There's no problem whatsoever. But also, the, the way they shoot their pictures is very tasteful. Modeling has, been, uh, has made a big change in my life, definitely. I mean, I come from a small town in Holland um, where people don't think the same way at all. I mean, they don't have, for example, the American dream. I'm not a jealous person at all. I'm not. I mean, I try and do my best and if works, I'm very happy. If it doesn't, nothing I can do about it. Karen's exceptional looks radiate her positive attitude. I'm a happy person. I'm, I mean, I'm just me. And coming in at number one, gap tooth Dutch delight, Laura Stone.
Meet Laura Stone. Her face is becoming familiar to many, not only because she's one of today's most in-demand models, but also because of her curious facial expressions. Should I laugh more? Because somebody else told me that as well, actually, two days ago. It was like, you, that was the first question they asked me, like, why don't you ever smile? <laughs> I just don't have a smiley face anyway, except when I'm talking to people and being like, whatever, normal. So, I don't know, maybe I'll try today. But what's the real story behind her wins? My feet are so little, and the shoes are always so big, and then last season I fell over all the time. What size foot are you that, that's so tiny? Like a really small 37. They always fall off, and I'm always, I always get so scared. Today it's good, because everybody has flat shoes, so it's starting off well. I started modeling a long time ago, about 10 years ago. When I was 13, somebody, I was on, um, on holiday in Paris and we were with my whole family in the metro and this woman came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be a model. And I'm like, I just started laughing at her pretty much because it didn't really make any sense. And then my parents kind of liked the idea and they sent the pictures to the agency in Holland and, and um, then they did a competition, which I didn't win. And then I started working in Holland on the weekends until I was 16. And then I got thrown out of high school, and then my mom sent me away to Paris. I want to backtrack to where you got kicked out of high school. Oh. <laughs> what was that for? Um, for being very naughty. <laughs> I'm really bad with um, authorities. And when people tell me what to do, I want to do the opposite. So that's exactly what I did for the longest time. And they were kind of over it after a while. So they just decided to throw me out. I lived in Paris for a year and then I decided I need to get some kind of diploma. So then I went to do this evening school in Holland, which is really easy and we made a good deal with them that I had to, I only had to show up to make midterms. So I had to go to Holland every four months, every three or four months to make some tests and then the final exam at the end of the year and that was it. And then I graduated high school. So in the end, it seems as though mother really did know best. She was like, well, you want to do everything yourself anyway, and so fine, go for it, go away. <laughs> and it kind of worked out for the best, because she was right in that way that if she would have sent me to another school, the same thing would have happened. And I just had to do something on my own and take care of myself. Then, my, then I realized myself that I had to go back to school, so that was kind of her plan, and it worked out exactly the way she planned it. The Calvin Klein campaign star knows she won't model forever. She plans to take her career to new altitudes. I'm not sure yet. I wanted to be a pilot for a really long time because I'm extremely afraid of flying and I have major panic attacks and everything. So then I figured I'll do it myself. And that's what I wanted to do. So I'll definitely get like a flying kind of license or something. But I don't think I want to spend the rest of my life in an airplane either. So I don't really know. I'm still thinking about it. Go online and make your vote count.